Evening. Let's turn to this now. The Helen Suzman Foundation has welcomed a high court ruling which found that the termination of the Zimbabwe exemption permit is unconstitutional, unlawful and invalid. It means that the ZEP holders can be arrested, deported or detained uh, with the permit's validity being extended by a year. ATM leader Vuyo Zungula joins us now uh, for reaction. Uh, Mr. Zungula, good evening. Good to have you and thank you very much uh, for coming on uh, tonight. Uh, the issue of uh, the ZEP permit holder seems to have been uh, badly handled, it, it, it seems, according to the courts. Um, uh, it, might, it might be a position uh, uh, of, of the South African government certainly to discontinue that dispensation, but the decisions and how they are going about it is, is, is not uh, constitutional. What's your reaction? Um, look, Tabo, firstly, this, um, what has happened now, should be a further indication um, to the people of our country that the ANC has failed to govern and is continuously failing to ensure law and order in our country and to govern in the best interest of the citizens. Because it cannot be that you are going to have um, the ZEP issue being a continuous, um, you know, you have going to have continuous extensions and you find that Firstly, the holders are going to have um, the, the, the anxiety of knowing whether what's going to happen. And at the same time, you are going to have NGOs such as the Helen Sussman Foundation actually um, advancing for court cases, advancing for um, issues that are not really in the interest of the citizens. In other words, you are going to have um, NGOs that are insensitive to the plight and the suffering of South African citizens. Therefore, the handling um, has been um, very, very bad, as like court has said. Now, for us as an ATM, we view this um, as, a, as a failure on the side of a government, a government that needs to be changed next year. That way, we're going to have a proper government that will govern and handle matters in a manner that will take into account the interests of our people. Yeah. If you were in government tomorrow, what, what input would you give to this particular decision? Um, look, Tabo, when the ZEPs, in fact, let's not confine the issue to only ZEPs because there's many um, permits that were given by the country um, to um, citizens of other countries given the nature of the challenges that those countries were having. However, times have changed, the circumstances have changed because you've got a country that has more than 50% of its people living in poverty. South Africa has got um, over 43% um, unemployment rate on, it, on the expanded definition, um, close to 70% of the people living in, um, um, of young people are also um, out of work. Therefore, that on its own requires that whatever decisions that are taken are taken in the best interest of those citizens that are basically unemployed, they are in poverty, and they are, they, they are um, not enjoying the fruits of the economy of their own country. Now, what the government is failing to do here, it is failing to properly manage a situation, and that unfortunately creates a, a wrong perception that South Africans hate other people from other countries, whereas it is not true. The biggest issue here, it is a fight for scarce resources. And when the government fails to manage issues concerning migration, it passes the responsibility or it passes the problem to citizens. Now, when citizens act like we've seen at Dipslut, um, in Marabastad, then becomes a problem because ordinarily the citizens are not supposed to um, um, to deal with issues concerning migration because the government is elected to do so, is empowered to do so. Now, when the government is failing, then the citizens take the law into their own hands and issues um, um, become conflated and it becomes something else. Whereas in our view, you need a government that will actually govern and enforce the law. The laws are very clear regarding migration. The laws are very clear regarding all of the issues that the government is failing to do now. So that is our contribution to the matter as the ATM, that um, you need a government that will actually govern. You do not need a government that fails um, to govern because the failures of the government in terms of handling the migration issue creates this problem that we see now, which when the yeah. people try to intervene on their own, then the government um, 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 labels them otherwise. What's the view of the ATM on, on the Helen Suzman intervention here? The Helen Suzman is saying 
they are by no means saying that a government has got, for example, no right to decide that a particular dispensation has got to come to an end. In fact, one of the words that they use is that they, they, they were not calling for this particular permit to be extended into perpetuity. But what they are saying, though, is consider the vulnerable condition that you are going to leave the permit holders in uh, when you abruptly just cancel it and end it. Now, I'm putting that question because you've just raised the question of 50% of the country living under a vulnerable position uh, of unemployment, high inflation, uh, 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 and, 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 and poverty. If, if yeah. you were to weigh these two, how, how, how do you weigh them as ATM? The vulnerability of the ZEP holders who will be left uh, uh, without their income and the, the work that they've been doing for the last 10 years because that particular ZEP was not uh, cancelled uh, and the, the interests of South Africans. Yeah, look, Tabo, here, um, firstly, NGOs such as the Helen Sussman Foundation, um, you know, are foundations that are, they are NGOs that are there not operating in the best interest of South Africa. In fact, they are counter um, progressive um, NGOs that only intervene in matters that will disadvantage South Africans. Um, we've seen, for example, how um, you know, on issues concerning um, the, the issues of law and order, the issues concerning um, you know, right to um, access to information, they only intervene where, when it's certain people that are basically um, going to benefit, particularly here, because many people would think that the Helen Sussman Foundation is acting in the best interest of the ZEP holders. Whereas what we know and what everyone knows is that such foundations actually prefer non-South Africans because they are able to pay them slave wages. They are able um, you know, to, to, to exploit them. They are able to create um, conditions of slavery because such um, ZEP holders could not even be part of um, unions in our country. So that is what they are doing. It is not because they, they, they love or they, they value um, 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 the, the ZEP holders. Now, what our view should be as the ATM is that you need to take into account the, 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 the economic situation that we find ourselves in and how insensitive it becomes to South Africans who are basically um, without jobs, without means of making an economic living, um, and at the very same time, the ZEPs, when, in fact, not limited to ZEPs, but they were not issued um, for, permanent, for, for permanent residents. There was an agreement for a certain time period in which they are going to be operational, because at the view of the government at the time, it was to deal with the problems that was faced in that particular country. Now, those problems require Zimbabweans to confront the problems that are in Zimbabwe. They require Angolans to confront the problems that are in Angola. Therefore, it was a mitigating strategy to ensure that, um, you know, the, the, the holders do get um, time um, to actually gather their strength, but ultimately to confront their problems. Therefore, what is required in our view is that the government must be able um, firstly, not to continuously extend these ZEP com um, 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 uh, permits. Secondly, they must be able to say, now that the court has highlighted these are the issues in which they as a government have failed, this is how they are correct, they are going to correct. In fact, Mr. Motswaleti should um, appeal the judgment, make sure that he's got his ducks on, um, in, on, uh, um, in order, in order to make sure that when the time comes that he goes back to um, the court processes, everything is correct in accordance to the law. But the issue of having um, um, the permits being extended... And it, was, it is something that will make South Africans um, to feel aggrieved because their own government is not sensitive to their plight. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't consider it wasteful expenditure. I mean, the, the, the minister has already said, OK, he's uh, reading both judgments. He is, of course, considering uh, uh, an appeal uh, and what other action he needs to take at this particular point. To appeal this, in, in your view, would not be a wasteful exercise. No, 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 it is not a wasteful exercise. It is a necessary exercise in the sense that if it goes up to the level of the Constitutional Court, 
then the government will be able to know that this is where they've got it wrong and this is what they need to, they need to do in order to get it right. Now, they will be able now to know from a legal perspective, these are the processes they need to follow in order for, for the problem to actually be, um, to be corrected permanently. What we don't agree with, with as an ATM, you'll recall that these um, permits were issued um, for five years and they had extensions. And in the last meeting, in the last um, few years, I think it was a time of COVID when it was said that it is the last time that they are going to be extended for a period of six months. Now, once you have a period, um, the extensions of each and every six months, you are creating anxiety and you are creating South Africans to be, to be also um, aggrieved by um, such extensions given our economic status because the economic status that led to um, South Africa granting these permits um, of those countries is the very same status that now as a country we find ourselves in. But we need as a country to find permanent solutions. And permanent solutions require that the SCA must make a judgment. If um, Minister Mutsolet is, it is not in his favour, it needs to go up the level of the Constitutional Court. The Zimbabwean ambassador to South Africa, uh, I read some reports, they have welcomed this uh, particular High Court uh, uh, ruling while they are, of course, going to study it a little bit further. But there is a sense that I suppose even the, the Zimbabwean government would want this ZEP to be continued. Are we failing to engage with them properly on, on the challenges that you're raising uh, for them to also be on the side of South Africa in resolving this issue, especially considering that uh, the, the ZANU-PF that is ruling is seemingly in a very close relationship with the ANC. Look, it is not in the interest of the ZANU-PF, which is the ruling government in Zimbabwe, to actually have this corrected, because if you are going to have all of the holders of the ZEPs going, to, uh, going back to Zimbabwe to vote, um, these are the very same people who are disgruntled by the governance of that particular country. Therefore, when they go back, then chances are that ZANU-PF that has led to the devastation that we see in Zimbabwe will be out of power. So it is not in their interest. And we know that their sister part, which is the ANC, which equally has caused mayhem, destruction to the lives of citizens in South Africa. Also, we will work with that um, ZANU-PF because... Um, you know, they are of the same mentality when it comes to destruction and, uh, you know, misgovernance in their respective countries. Therefore, our view is, and um, we want to stress that the concerns and the issues and the lives and the future of Zimbabwe depends on Zimbabweans. And therefore, um, it is Zimbabweans who must take it upon themselves to correct whatever that is wrong in Zimbabwe. There is no one from another country that will do that. The same thing here in South Africa. All of the issues that we find, all of the unhappiness and the dissatisfaction that we face in South Africa, it is people from South Africa who need to correct all of that next year. So as the ATM would encourage Zimbabweans to take it upon themselves to go out in numbers to vote and correct their problems in, in Zimbabwe, and South Africans must equally do the same thing here in South Africa. Mr. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on tonight.